My name is Timothy Long. I am the director and senior specialist of the Couture and Luxury Accessories Department at Hindman. I'd like to welcome you to our second installment of Sips with a Specialist at Hindman. And I'd like to start with a toast. To say thank you for coming today. I am absolutely delighted to be presenting this dress to you for my video. This dress was made by Charles James, an Anglo-American fashion designer who played an important role in fashion in the 20th century and whose work has inspired some of the leading names in fashion, such as Christian Dior, Halston, Alexander McQueen, and Ralph Rucci, to name just a few. In this video, I am going to describe the Charles James dress, its provenance, and also what research we've done to help determine authenticity and ultimately value, which is part of the service that Heinemann provides for each consignment. As director and senior specialist of the Couture and Luxury Accessories Department, my job is to find and bring to auction contemporary vintage and antique clothing and accessories. I search around the world for these items with consigners sending items from numerous countries for each auction. And I often travel um, searching for items, which together results in an annual assessment of tens of thousands of items. It is from this vast array of property that the four annual couture and luxury accessories auctions are created. What led me to this job was my decades of experience working in museums as a curator of fashion and decorative arts in the United States and the United Kingdom. Throughout this experience, I've worked with a variety of artifacts from garments and accessories worn by members of the British royal family, such as Queen Victoria or King Charles I, to clothing worn by former US presidents, such as Abraham Lincoln or George Washington. I've worked with archaeological material discovered beneath London's mud or in London's mud, and of course to a variety of everyday items donated to museums uh, from people like you and me. Now, each of these stories or each of these objects has an important and compelling story to be discovered and told. In nearly all of these projects, the subject of authenticity comes up. So, for example, a question when I was working um, with the Charles, the King Charles I vest, uh, the question often was asked is, how do you know this vest was worn by King Charles I? Or how do you know that this jacket was actually worn by Abraham Lincoln on the day of his assassination? These are some of the questions that have been posed on the projects that I've worked on. And so while my work as a museum curator have allowed me to curate dozens of exhibitions and author a variety of texts and publications, the subject that I have studied the most is the work of Charles James. And so I'm not sure words can describe how excited I am to be able to work with this garment, with such an important and rare item, and to bring something like this to the market and to assist in finding it a good home. This dress is made of dark blue silk satin with a dramatic collar that sits over a cutout at the top of the chest. The gathering and tucks over the bust are pulled into the numerous darts and seams bringing the eye to the waistline point before flaring out dramatically into a full sweeping hem. Here at Heinemann, we take authentication as one of our main priorities for all of our sales, and this Charles James is, particularly in, uh, is a particularly interesting example. And before I explain why, I wanted to give you a little of information on Charles James. James was born in England to a British father and an American mother from Chicago, and images from James's childhood show that he traveled between the United States and the United Kingdom quite regularly. After school, James tried many jobs before entering the world of fashion as a milliner in Chicago in the 1920s, which came as a surprise because James had no training in fashion. He, worked, uh, he moved to New York um, for a short period um, before settling in London, where he remained throughout most of the 1930s. And throughout this period, he transitioned from making um, hats to becoming a women's clothing designer. 
By World War II, James had moved to uh, New York, where he remained uh, for the rest of his life. Now, it is widely believed that James having no training in fashion or design is what helped create his unique approach to fashion design and construction. James's designs are almost always identifiable. Because he was not taught that you make, uh, that you make a dress this way or that you cut sleeves a specific way, his approach is unique, truly. Seams swoop around the body in a way that is simply not found in the work of other designers. The way James attaches a sleeve to the main part of a garment is simply not found elsewhere. For some of the very first media coverage of James's work, his work was seen as different, and this remains throughout his career, and it is true to this day. Interestingly, this dress came to Heinemann as being attributed to Charles James, and so I will now explain how we authenticate an item like this. So I'm going to start with the parts that are perhaps the easiest to see, which is the design and the construction. And so I'm going to review this dress from the top to the bottom and point out the details that I can see that stand out to me as being of the James style. The first image is of a collar, is of the collar, um, that you can see is made with origami folds, common in James's work. That fold is sewn um, into the neck seam at the center back, and so it forms part decoration, but also serves a function because it helps keep the collar up. Now we move on to the curved lines over the bus, the placement of the seams, and the gathering. The, the placement of the seam outlines the outside of the bust, keeping it smooth while the gathers are strategically placed, in James's words, to enhance the body. Continuing to move down, we see numerous seams and patterns converging into one area at the stomach where that line connects to the skirt. And this is something that you'll see on a lot of James's work where numerous seams converge into one area. And although in this image you can see some wavy lines, this dress would have fit perfectly on the original client. And that technique, that ability to cut all of those tiny seams in that small area and make it fit beautifully is really an achievement. And finally, these custom designed hip pads that are partially made with the silk satin of the dress are very Jamesian. These are found on the inside of the dress and they're stitched on the front hips to the waist seam and hang on the inside of the dress. James would often use the scraps of the exterior of the garment to make the interior parts or pads by manipulating materials and fabrics to create the properties that he needed. So he would sew different layers of fabric together, real, um, plastic, woven, non-woven, to achieve the properties he needed to create the shapes he envisaged. And so while a designer who was taught sewing and pattern cutting in a more traditional way might take a very tr different approach, James's approach um, to these challenges was often more like an artist thought. And so James is often seen or often described as an artist who worked in the medium of fashion. So all of these hallmarks that I just described are, from my point of view, proof that this is, uh, or uh, sorry, that these details are there um, strongly enough that I feel fine with the attribution that this is a Charles James, but I would like to take this a bit further. And so the next view is to look at the label. Labels are of course extremely important, and in this dress there is a label, but it is unreadable. There are a few traces of markings, but nothing to properly read and nothing to suggest the words Charles James. So for a period of time, this dress went unidentified, lost in the world of fashion, and detached from Charles James, until its owner started to do some research and typed the word silk satin ribbon label, and they started to connect the dots. They found my work on, Hi um, on Charles James, which led them here to Hindman. Now it is known and documented that Charles James used silk satin ribbon labels early in his career with his signature and the date of the dress, the date that the dress was made. 
early in his career these labels are found, and so we have numerous examples to use as comparison. But that's still not enough, because on this one you can't read the label. So I would like to see what else we can find to help prove that this is a James dress, and I'd like to see if science can help. And so we have the opportunity to view a little bit more here through a little bit of experimentation. Perhaps a way to get your head around this is think of forensics. We know that fiber, hair can be analyzed to help reveal aspects about an item. And so in this instance, consider the analysis of signatures or the ink, um, the attempt to try to distinguish a forged document between something that's original um, or added at a later date. And so for this review, Im imaging techniques in particular may help visualize remnants of ink, which is what we hope to do. So in this uh, specific case, we are trying to enhance the visibility of the traces of ink, otherwise almost entirely invisible to the naked eye. Some of the most commonly used techniques involve the use of infrared and ultraviolet radiation, which are safe under controlled conditions. Materials which appear similar to the eye may appear differently under ultraviolet or infrared radiation. There is no steadfast rule as to which technique may provide the necessary information, so we'll try what we have at our disposal. So this image is of the label as it appears to the naked eye. The image is taken under particularly good lighting, and so this allows some traces of ink to be seen, but they are very difficult to decipher. You can't read anything on this. So this next image is a um, copy of Charles James's signature that I took. I traced his signature, which exists on, um, as I mentioned, labels, but also lots of documents that I have copies of in uh, my files. And so this is his signature. Now, the traces of ink visible to the naked eye on the label of this dress match quite well with the signature or parts of the signature. And so there are traces of the C, you can see the swooping lines, and also of the J. And also you can see on the far right traces of where the date is typically found in other known examples of James's work from this period. This is all good news, but of course, you know, the, still difficult to see. And without the signature, not um, easy to compare. So we have a couple of other uh, attempts here. So this is the infrared radiation image. Unfortunately, it does not provide uh, better contrast between the ink and the silk ribbon. And this is the ultraviolet induced luminescence image, which also does not provide any additional information. But lastly, this is uh, a technique called visible induced luminescence. We shine visible light only, namely blue, green, and red light, and we capture the emitted radiation in the infrared range. This is the image, and it shows a considerable better contrast between the ink and the silk ribbon. This means that the two materials behave differently, and we can therefore distinguish them, making the label readable and the dress authenticated fully. Several elements of the first and last name can be read, even if the date remains difficult to decipher. The first date is quite, uh, the first digit, pardon, is quite clearly a four in the date. Less clear is the second digit, which at the moment we have interpreted as either five or six, possibly. More research will be undertaken. So what are the implications? Now that we know this dress is authentic, we need to place it within James's work. We know it's from early um, in James's work in the 1940s. And we know that this dress, in my interpretation, in my opinion, is um, a transition, uh, a transition dress caught between two styles, um, and perhaps even the pioneer in this transition. If we look at the back, it is a style left over from the 1930s, with a bias cut, zigzag waistline seam, and no boning or underlayers in the bodice or waistline. When you turn the dress around, it is looking forward to the late 1940s and the boned and hourglass silhouette of the new look era. But perhaps the most important aspect of this dress is the combination of the up to 1947, 45, 46 date and the fact that there are these pads on the hips which thrust the hips forward in a style known as the new look. However, Christian Dior didn't present the new look until 1947. 
As we know, Dior and many other people credit Charles James with inspiring the new look silhouette. Could it be that this is one of the dresses that inspired Christian Dior? In conclusion, I'm absolutely thrilled to present with confidence an authentic Charles James dress from the 1940s. This is an example of how several strands of expertise must come together to ensure that what is offered to the customer is significant and authentic. Thank you.